Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice. To get involved, go to xyadvisor.com or simply download the XY Advisor app. This series is brought to you by Hub24, Australia's leading provider of integrated platform, technology and data solutions to the wealth industry. By working with licensees and advisors, Hub24 is delivering innovative solutions and service excellence that enables you to do business your way, creating efficiencies for your business and value for your clients. These are just some of the reasons why advisors have rated Hub24 number one for overall satisfaction and best managed portfolio functionality six years running, empowering better financial futures together. Find out more at hub24.com.au. And welcome to this topic series on delivering cost-effective advice with an entrepreneurial mindset. My name is Fraser Jack, and in this episode number two of five, we take a deep dive into the mindset from Adele Martin as she created The Money Mentor, helping prospective clients at scale prepare themselves for an ongoing advice relationship with a financial advisor. Now strap yourselves in, Adele is high energy and doesn't muck around, so let's jump headfirst into this episode. Adele Martin, thank you so much for joining us in this episode. I'm really looking forward to this, getting into uh, your journey and all of the different entrepreneurial mindset and ways of thinking that you've been doing, you'll be bringing to your advice practice over the years and, and where it's heading in the future, so thank you so much. Oh, thanks for having me. So let's go back. Let's go back in time from the beginning. Uh, you know, you you obviously um, were in an advice practice and, and you know, obviously there was some fairly high uh, pressure on you to become a traditional advice practice and work with retirees and help them retire and, and, and all that. And that's something that you went, hang on a minute, I can do so much more. Yeah. So I started by accident financial planning. I don't know if that's how most people start. Uh, I did an accounting degree. And um, whilst I was finishing that degree, I knew very clearly I did not want to be an accountant. So it was probably the single most boring degree you could possibly do. Accounting theory on a Friday morning, uh, not fun. Anyway, I finished that degree while I was doing it. Thought I should get some experience in an office somewhere. Happened to get a job as an assistant for financial planner. I had no idea. I didn't even know what superannuation was. I was 19 and no idea. Uh, but what I could start to just knew it was in an office. I could start to, we had a petitioned wall and it was for a bank. We had a petition wall and I could hear the conversations. And I quickly realized that it was very much people focused, which is what I loved. Um, and it was very much future focused, which is what I loved because you can change the future. Accounting was all about the past. You can't change the past. Uh, and it also didn't have a very big people element to it. So yeah, that. um, you know, you might have some accounts that argue with that, but that that's was largely my experience. So I sort of um, then was like, well, I you know, this is cool. I, I want to, you know, I can see how this could be a career, and you know, it was offered a pretty amazing deal to stay at the bank. Uh, even after I left, um, they you know wanted to have a catch up to try and um, you know get me to stay, and uh, I just knew it wasn't the right. I, could, I you know, some, I'm very big now on. I wasn't at the time. Now looking back, I know it's very big on listening to my intuition and what that says. And so, uh, very much tapped into that. Just didn't feel like the right fit. So then I took a job as a power planner for uh, not very much money uh, at all. But I knew that that's the background that I wanted to do, and I wanted to get that tech background to give me that confidence um, in front of people. And then I went into, um, you know, being an advisor. Now, this very much was a traditional financial planning business, as in retirees, um, you know, come to you at retirement. Pretty much most of them were at retirement and you were helping them manage. I think the first bit job that I ever had to do um, when I was in this advice space was help a lady plan for her husband's funeral. So I had to go and get all the costings and come back to her and he wasn't even passed away and I had to tell her how much we had to budget for the funeral. So, you know, it was a pretty much a baptism of fire into to that space. Uh, and yeah, but I, I did, I loved, I did love working with my retirees. Um, like, you know, they were beautiful. They're the sort of people that had all the time in the world. They wanted to, one of the guys would just come in and read the paper while his wife did the shopping. He just liked sitting in the room, like, that de- let me develop some skill set in estate planning. I knew about the importance of estate planning, that it had to be more than a will. Um, and so, yeah, um, and then even if you have a will and all the documents, that's absolutely useless because you have to know where the assets are and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I just – it really opened my eyes up to, you know, 
the importance in that space. I then bought into that business, I, you know, with the plan to be the exit strategy of one of the owners and to help with retention, which I'm sure a lot of people listening probably have the same thing. Now that didn't work. Now it didn't work um, for a variety of reasons. One, I know I knew I wanted to work with younger clients. We were having this conversation, you know, where they were saying, I wish we saw you years ago. I was seeing people that were having to work with bad backs, bad knees, all that sort of stuff. That now we're having to rely on the age pension. You know, they couldn't do all the things they wanted to do. They had this regret. So uh, they wish they saw someone earlier. So I knew I wanted to work with younger people. So that sort of triggered something in me to start with. I knew it was going to be difficult in the current business. Now I didn't. I didn't know this at the time, but having you know done some personal development stuff now and had another business partner after this not work out, um, which I'll get into, I realized that it's because we were two visionaries. You cannot have two visionaries work together. It does not work, um, two visions. You need, there's something called rocket fuel. There's a rocket fuel quiz you can do, uh, which helps you figure out whether you're a visionary or whether you're an integrator. So, A visionary needs an integrator to get the stuff done. You cannot have two people living in the future, two visionaries. um, It it doesn't work. They clash. And so that's what I reflected on what I've learned. But what happens is visionaries attract other visionaries because they like them. They like talking to them and they're fun and cool and they're in the future. It doesn't work in a business partnership to have two people like that. Um, So exited that. And and at the time I was working with an emotional intelligence coach uh, and he said to me, um, he, had, he asked me one question about, oh, if you had this XY job and earned this much money, would you go? I'm like, no, because it, it wasn't about the money. And he goes, right, well, I want you tomorrow to put your notice in. Uh, and I said, but I don't have a plan. Like, I don't know where am I going to be. I don't even have a license. Who's going to, how am I going to exit? Because I bought in. So it was very messy. Um, so, yeah, that, but I did. I, with a lot of, um, you know, nerves and really being sick, I put my notice in the next day with no plan. A week later, uh, an accountant came to me and said, hey, um, I've got a space you can share an office with me and, you know, I can give you, you know, leads, we can work together. Um, and she'd been in the industry you know, accounting for a while. So, yeah, once you say yes and take that uh, that leap, you know, the universe tends to, uh, you know, give you the right path. So, yeah, that was – I was going to be the exit plan. So, in that, though, something else I learned along that way is we I bought in just before GFC. So if you have a business that's on a 1% and you bought in funded with debt, you know, quite a bit of debt into that business and it's a 1%, you know, recurring revenue model and the market's full of sky, you've still got that debt to pay. So what I learned very quickly was how to be very good at service packages and um, positioning fixed fees. And so the, I think I wasn't even 25. I think I might have been 25. I was having all those service package discussions with, um, you know, I was the lead advisor because I was motivated to do it because I had the debt to pay, but also it was the right thing. Why should we, you know, link what we do to the money they have? It's the same amount of work. Uh, And so um, it was always, and because I had done the work, because I'd been a power planner, because I'd been admin, I think I could really understand why you needed to charge that. And so, yeah, uh, I had all those service package discussions. We got everyone on fixed fees. uh, And so, yeah, really articulate a different service package offering for retirees. Um, and then, yeah, and then I went, you know, by myself, um, grew very, very quickly. Uh, when I grew very, very quickly, um, you know, got different coaching and help um, and then thought, well, I wanted someone to do the back office stuff. So I partnered with somebody else. But within six months, we realized it just wasn't the right fit. Again, two visionaries um, did not work together. Um, so might be, you know, amazing as different businesses, but together you can't have two uh, visionaries together. So um, exited that within six months. And what I love about this is every, you know, failure, I say, leads to an amazing opportunity. It's a lesson that I've learned. I, I don't see um, mistakes as, I don't think mistakes, I just see learnings and lessons. And if you're not making, you know, mistakes or less, you're not growing, you're not evolving. So I actually think that second one is what propelled me to create my money buddy. If I want to have a bigger impact and I don't want to grow, have a big team in the background um, and I'm not going to have a third business partner, although I might, I don't know, um, how how am I going to do this? And so that's what helped look me to create, okay, let's look external, what are other places doing? Let's create my money buddy. It's a six-week program that people go through um and yeah that's how that got to that point now that's grown and evolved since then as well which we can get into um but yeah 
that leads us to pretty much now. Well, that's uh, it's a great. Uh, I, I love the I love the chief visionary officer idea too. That's um that's something I've I've, I've played around with for a while. And you're absolutely right. Um, I'm a visionary, and we could never work together. We'd be, we'd have an amazing ideas, but nothing would ever get done. <laughs> and <laughs> and the integrator. It's really interesting that you put that together with the, having the integrator, and obviously we'll go through some of your journey through my money buddy. And how did you then? Because that's the that's where the proof's in the pudding, right? It's like having a financial plan without implementing anything doesn't work. The same as having a great idea or a great vision without actually implementing it doesn't work. So let's uh, yep. let's talk about that. You know, you've come up with My Money Buddy. Uh, you've got this concept of how do we create a group? How do we do a, you know, a one-to-many concept in the financial advice mm-hmm. space, which has always been this traditional one-to-one or, you know, one-to-a-couple. But we've got an advisor and we've got a client. They sit in the room together and they work it out individually. Now, for many people, that's a, that's a headspace thing to then go, how do we then provide value from a financial advice space to many people uh, under the current regime that we've got? So let's let's dive into that. From you Yeah, know. so I can tell you what I, what I did, the mistakes that I've made and what, where it is now and how it's evolved to because it's not just, um, it's not just our head. It's the fact that, um, you know, clients, money is such a taboo thing. So I, I heard this thing once that someone would rather, you know, go naked than tell you how much they were earning. Like it, it's such a taboo thing, money. So, yeah, definitely that's had some stumbling blocks and why it's involved. Uh, and also people don't want more information than what help to, you know, actually make sure stuff happens. So I can tell you what it was and how it's evolved. So going back a couple of years ago, I concentrated very much on budgeting and cash flow. So... We also had a technology provider that was part of that. I thought it made it super value to have the technology provider as part of that. A couple of things I learned. Firstly, nobody wants budgeting advice to attract broke people. They, they want what the outcome is, the goal. They do not want to budget. It'd be like, again, I look to dieting. No, no, people don't advertise, come do this amazing diet and be on 1,200 calories. No, nobody wants that. They want the amazing beach body. They don't want the 1,200 to do it. Now, we know that they have to do that as part of it, but you don't promote and lead with that. So that was the very first thing. Um, you will attract a hope of broke people if you do that. Also, what I've learned is technology, um, you know, for tracking, if for that is important, um, but it's not important. It's not going to help someone budget because that's like stepping on the scales and thinking that if you just step on the scales, that's the only thing you'll need to do to lose weight. You actually have to change your behaviors to lose weight. And so that's what I, I learned. People got so focused on the technology and setting it up and having it all linking. They weren't changing the behaviors. Fast forward, we did a, a version um, two. And also what I found was I didn't have a, like, it was just basically information. And I just assumed, well, oh, it's all there. You go ahead and you do it. So you can, what I found is people don't want more information. They want help to actually do it. So you can't just have a course on your website or a program on your website and think that that's going to solve all the millennial problems and they're going to just do your course and what's all there, then just can do it. You need to have some sort of coaching element into it to make sure that they're actually um, you know, celebrating the wins and doing the work and there's a place to go if they get stuck. So what I've done is now evolve that into version 2.0 of My Money Buddy. I've called it My Money Buddy Accelerator. It's still My Money Buddy. I've taken out the technology. We do not do that. Um, I've given it a time frame, six weeks. And I also do a weekly coaching. So a weekly coaching in a, in a Facebook group for them where they can submit their questions in advance or they can um, ask the questions um, live and we do that each week. And then what else? So we've got, and then I've got some automations in the background, so they're they're getting sent, you know, check ins regularly. Um, I've also gamified it a bit by giving them quizzes, so they can see how they were at the start, see how they were at the end. Um, you know, as an example, um, how do you feel about money? Does it make you one zero super one super super stressed or ten amazing? How do you feel? How confident are you? You've got a plan for retirement. What? And you can see where their gaps and where they were and where they are. So we've gamified a bit. All this is done automated, not involved in it. Regular lessons, regular um, automations go out. Hey, love to know what's a win you've had. Um, what are you? What are you stuck with? What's your right next three things? So that is all automation stuff that happens in the background. We've got the coaching call, and the other new iteration which I'm doing uh, now is we're adding a bonus where they get a bonus strategy session once they've graduated by Money Buddy. So, and now my Money Buddy doesn't just do budgeting; it does investments and superannuation. And a lot of mindset stuff. So I've got a whole section on, on mindset. And so um, it's uh, – and when I say mindset, I'm talking about, you know, beliefs around money, so, you know, why they might feel a bit stuck, you know, childhood stories that have come up around money. So we've got a whole section on that. And 
the importance of who you hang around, how you talk about money, all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, so this program now, the end of it, they get a one-on-one strategy session. So that strategy session is a chance for us to say, okay, what have you done? Uncovering those gaps and opportunities. And then if they want help to implement, then we could look at what, you know, personal advice and implementation looks like. So, yeah, that's how it's involved, and I partner with another advisor to do that bit of it. I'm just going to I'm just going to unpack this a little bit because I because I, I love it. So there's, obviously there's been you you created this thing that you thought was perfect at the time, obviously, and then you have evolved it and evolved it and evolved it to be this thing. I love the idea of gamification. I love the idea of putting a, a framework around the six weeks and, and calling it a program and getting to the end of it um, and graduating from the end of it. I think that's really important too. Again, people will come in and understand that um, and you know mindset and habits we all know that that's you know habits are created from the original mindset and if you try and fix it with the same mindset you're not going to fix it so you need to change your mindset um and i I really like the part that you mentioned just at the end there where you talked about um uh, acknowledging and how people talk about money to their friends and even coaching them on how they're going to speak about money to their friends one is obviously it provides some referrals to you but um if they can get it right but also changes that conversation of being as you mentioned before a taboo subject to something that they feel confident talking about Absolutely. So we've got uh, I've got some really cool YouTube videos and stuff that I share as part of that training to show them the impact. You know, yeah, it's it's definitely a space I'm tapping more into. Um, and the clients love it. They love it. They want to know how to talk to about money with their kids. They want to know should they have pocket money, um, you know, to their kids. So yeah, there's a whole different section on that, and you know, the clients really love it and they get a lot of value out of it. Yep. So the stepping stone program obviously it was a stepping stone towards getting you know uh, full, full financial advice, but it brought people along on a journey to. Get- get them the confidence to then step forward into taking financial mm-hmm. advice. Tell me about that program over the last few years, what the thought that's done to your uh, advice, well, what it did to your advice business at the time and with regards to, you know, bringing people in as leads, I guess, to the, the advice business. Yeah, well, it's got to, what's been really interesting is, so it started as a $500 program and now it's $1,500. Uh, and so what's really interesting is people will pay $1,500. Some of these people in the program, we've had 100 people over the last 12 months or so go through it. Um even though they've got other advisors, which I was like, why would you pay $1,500 if you've got other advisors? Um, And it came to the meetings were so rushed, they didn't understand what questions to even ask um, to even know if their advisor was doing a good job. They're in some XYZ super fund. I don't know why they're in it. Um, but the advisor is so compliance focused, you know, ticking, doing the fact find and doing this, you know, ticking off this, signing this thing. They've forgotten that the experience for the client has not been great. So that's been interesting that some of them actually already have advisors. Um, and so I say to this, this is going to give you enough information for you to feel confident to do it yourself. Or if you work with another individual, you're going to know what questions to ask. So to know if they're doing a good enough, a good job. You should never outsource responsibility for your finances, accounting, financial planning to anybody else. You need to understand it enough to know what questions to ask. That's how people get into trouble. And so I've positioned this as a program that people can educate themselves so they so they can do one of two things, do it yourself or have enough confidence if you work with an individual to know what to ask. Um, and I start with, I've got a lot of pushback about people wanting one-on-one advice and still wanting one-on-one. I'm no longer taking one-on-one. So I can say hand on heart, this is the best way that you can work with me. You're going to learn the most. You're going to be you know, more educated than pretty much most of the population of money. You're going to come out the other side, um, you know, very clear on, um, you know, how to build, you know, how to build wealth and how to reach financial independence. So I, I've gone all in on it. Um, this is the best way to work with me. Now, if I still get pushed back and they still want one-on-one, totally cool. Two, firstly, two things, offer a happiness guarantee. If after 30 days you're not thinking this is the best money you've ever spent, I will happily, in fact, I will insist on refunding you. Um, the other thing I do, I want to make it easy for you to do this. Um, so you're going to get some wins along the way. If you can't afford it all at once, let's do a payment plan. So um, giving them a payment plan as well. Yeah. Can I just can I, yeah. can I pull you up there? Sorry. I know because I want to get to yeah. the answers and all these, but I love the happiness guarantee. <laughs> um, so you mentioned before feeling confident. Now, this is a really interesting point. Obviously, you're, mm-hmm. you're selling a product or, or you're promoting a product that says pay $1,500. And I want to ask you about the touch points. Um, but you're going to, it's going to take you from not, you know, uh, you know, becoming richer or getting more financially better off or doing these other things, but from going from stressed and uncertain to confident. That's that's yeah. what you. That's the main guts of it, right? So we're not saying you're going to be. I would, this say, much I would say that on average, people people, but if they do the program, will people 
find thousands of dollars worth of value because awesome. they've never yep. structured a budget yep. before. They they realize like some of them are sitting in the default balance fund when they're only twenty something, when they're thirty. Like they didn't understand, you know, um, they didn't understand the fees that they were paying and you know all that yep. sort of stuff. So or, the, or, or some of them have got money sitting in a bank account earning interest when it could be an offset account or a redraw or. Like they just didn't understand like stuff that sometimes we take for very much granted. Um, so I would say on average, most people are making thousands of dollars uh, better off each year yep. uh, and that keeps going. But ultimately it comes down to they have confidence. They feel in control. They feel more confident and they have more certainty. So yeah, that that is a large part of, of yep. the benefit that they get yep. as well as financial stuff. Awesome. Now, um, I just wanted to ask you uh, – a few things I want to get into the touch points, but before we do, is this the high school thing you mentioned in the first episode we did? The you know graduating yeah. from high school, awesome. Um, yeah, talk- this is this is the graduate. Yeah. So fifteen hundred dollars. Talk to me about the touch points. How many videos and information sessions, and will they get yeah, in so their six week program? Six, yeah, they got six modules. One module drops each week. The first one is on goals. Um, I've got a couple of really great goal exercises I get them to do. They're fully editable PDFs, so they can do it on their computer. Um, they don't have to print or do anything. So um, yeah, they do that it's the discussion that sometimes you know i've seen them say that they've you know brought them to tears um you know doing that so it, it can be just as powerful without you having to be in it um in fact more powerful because they're in their home they feel secure they don't have you sort of feeling like they're judged being judged so yeah that's that's the first module second module is around spending plan and helping them with their spending plan um yeah so on and so forth um so but the touch points are as soon as they register um as soon as they join i send them a gift in the mail the gift of the mail is a personalized um, a thank you card with a book and they get that in the mail. And then we've got the live training every week as well on a Thursday. Um, and then we've got at the um, first, after the uh, when they sign in as well, we get them to do a, a ranking exercise to see where they're up to, um, like what areas do they want to focus on the most. I mean, I actually like looking at that to see, you know, where I might need to focus, you know, the lives on and stuff like that. Because I don't want to be talking heavily on creating, you know, budgeting stuff if they really love the you know investing stuff so yeah that's been interesting um and then i do the um automation after i think the halfway point i ask them this what's a oh, might be what's a win that they've had what they stuck with um and then at the end um they get in- invited to a strategy session fantastic so just talk to me about that uh, that weekly um uh group session that you do is that for yeah. everybody and say that doing the goals module or everyone that's doing the spending plan module or is yeah it- so what I, I, I've thought about this a lot, um, and it's certainly not perfect by any means, but what I've done is I've just kept everyone in the group. Like whether they're up to week one or week six or whether – like I don't have this thing where we have a launch. I, I, don't, I personally don't like businesses that have this launch feast or venom. I want – you know, it's not good for the business model having this, you know, you can only join me in six weeks' time. It's also not good for the client because they're ready now. I'm going to make them wait six weeks. So people can join at any time. Um, and as a – I haven't put this on the contract, but I've just left them in the Facebook group. So if they come back to it in six months' time, I don't really care. Like, uh, you know, I think they get it. And also it just keeps you top of mind with them because they're going to talk to other people about it. So I do a coaching call every single week on the Thursday. I absolutely love doing it. It goes for 30 minutes. It's super easy to do. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's on, um, you know, they've got questions and sometimes they don't. And But it just keeps me front of mind for them. So and it keeps them very warm and very engaged. So, um, and that, that way they can join at any time. And people are up to different stages anyway. So, yeah, I've done that because I didn't like the other business model where they just joined and waited a while and all that sort of stuff. And you're utilising a platform, obviously, you mentioned that, uh, Facebook. You're yeah. utilising a platform that's already on most people's phones. Yes, I'm using Kajabi. So Kajabi is a platform that I use, um, which it does a couple of things. Uh, it can do your website. It can do landing pages. It can do courses. It can do payment. Um, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a, an amazing um piece of software I, I love it um so i have used a few things before that but this one to me made the most sense um i've used um teachable and i've used a facebook group um you, you can do some of this inside a facebook group because there's different modules and stuff inside there but yeah this one is the been the best one if anyone's listening you know thinking this might be for them just shoot me a message i've got a link that you can get a you know, 30-day trial from if you go just to the website you only get two weeks this way you can get a 30-day trial and have a play with it um, heads up that is affiliate link as in if you use it and pay i will get paid um but it is a great uh, a great platform and so yeah not for everyone not everyone needs all those bells and whistles but yeah certainly that's been I, like 
I love technology now. I don't need to do coding. I, did, I didn't do one single training on how to use this so- software. I just went straight in and started playing with it. Yep. I also like that it's a big software, like lots of people in the um, information education space, you know, entrepreneur space use this. So there's heaps of support available if you do get stuck with something. Um, that's why I liked it as well. It plugs into Stripe for payment. It, it does all the automations. It does the surveys. It does videos. You know, yeah, I really and, – and my website's in it as well. Um, yeah, so it does um, – yeah, it is a great platform. Brilliant, and I'm sure people will, will reach out to you and get more information on that. Um, now, I just wanted to go back. So that, so your your Money Buddy program is now your your entry level. People come in, you say, this is the best way to work with me. Um, it's 1500 bucks. The only way. I, uh, the only way. My ne- the, the next evolution of, of, of me, which um, putting this out there because this is a big, uh, uh, big step, I've had this – idea that I wanted to do the board of directors course, the company board of directors course. I have no idea why I wanted to do the company board of directors course. I'm like, I can't see me ever working on a board. I just think I would be, I don't know if I'd be particularly good on a board, but I really wanted to do it. And I couldn't figure out why. Um, and then I started to work with another coach who we can get into in a minute. Um, and she put this idea in my head that I was going to work with CEOs. And I'm like, there, there was going to be six CEOs that I was going to work with or in that space. Um, and that would be it. I'd just cap it at six. And I was like, that's why I'm doing the company board of directors course. It's to help me understand, you know, so I, I can see that the, you know, a next evolution of me, you know, a year or two's time, I want to work with, you know, six, seven figure female CEOs to help them around, you know, growing their wealth, protecting their wealth, understanding the emotional mindset stuff with money. Um, you know, those people that play that very high level. Um, that will be the next evolution that I'm, I'm working on at the moment. And so, yeah, doing the company board of directors course. I love that. You put that vision in your head. Um, excellent. So, that, so we've got the, got the six-week program. That's your high school graduation piece. Mm-hmm. Um, have, you, have you developed those other plans, the, the uni plan and the master's plan? No. So that's where we'd say if you want some of the – and some of them do come in already got some of them ticked off. Like some of them got a self made super fund already. Um, I, typically that's not the case. Um, but, yeah, some of them have got bits ticked off on all, on all the areas and that's totally cool as well. But I still to position it as you know largely this high school graduation and then if you want to work with another advisor in that self-made super fund space and the other space you know we partner so yeah as, after they graduate i'm not doing any one-on-one advice um and so the strategy session is with another advisor so at the moment i'm working you know with him on what that strategy session looks like what they get um you know making sure it's super valuable for the client they've got something they can take away so, yeah, we're working on what that looks like, that graduation, doing it jointly for the first several and then let, taking the training wheels off and letting him go. I've, I've had a few – the next evolution, because um, I already live in the future, you know that, I'm, I'm thinking and toying with the idea. So I get advisors referring clients to me well, you know, quite a bit now So because they don't have an offering, they don't know how to do it. So I get that quite a bit now, which is great. I take that as a massive, massive compliment that one of my peers would do that. The second thing I've got is, well, why can I help advisors create their own versions of my money, buddy? Um, help them create their own versions um, because it's much better to build trust. Like when someone sees me for, you know, five hours of video, they're more likely to know, like, and trust you. Um, and so um, it's really, it's more important if we could make their own versions of it, build trust, um, especially if they've got this, an older client base and intergenerational wealth transfer. It can be great to have their own version. It's a it's not just that it's, it's cheaper for someone. It's just less stress. I think sometimes we forget that coming to someone for your finances feels like very confronting. They can feel like they should be doing better what they are. They feel like, – and so – even they were like, oh, but, you know, if you get help, you'll book. The people just have this fear about coming to an advisor. And so this sort of program can be a really a way for them to actually build that know, like, and trust at an easy entry point. So I'm working with other advisors to create their own versions of that and figuring out how we can they can then give a bonus strategy session. Or if they don't want to do that, maybe we can have my money buddy as the um, thing and then making sure a link to the strategy session with that particular advisor. So, you know, if they refer someone, the strategy session goes back to that advisor for the next one. So lots of different ways we can work and model it and still um, yeah, doing that at the moment. So, yeah, I can see how helping people create their own my money buddies or referring a strategy session back to them. Because once they've done this program, they've done their budget, they know where their super is, they've, they, they've got very clear on their goals. All that onboarding process is done. And so this 
works very good in a very traditional financial planning business. Um, and I've got another advisor I'm working with at the moment where I'm helping him. He does not have a separate program. This is just going to be his financial planning business where step one, they do the goal. Step two, they do the spending plan. Step three, they do the fact find. Step four, they do risk profiling. The client on board themselves. And step five is they book the strategy meeting with him. It's not a separate program. It's just part of his financial planning business, um, which is you know a much better experience for the client as well. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and as you mentioned before, like the, putting the client first, I, this high school thing and u- university thing and master's thing is stuck in my brain for some reason. But um, so to me, that's because the you high- want to tick them off. You're all, like, you want all, to tick them off. Exactly yeah. right. All the stuff that you're doing at high school is all the stuff that you're doing now with the, the money buddy and the planning. And uh, I know we'll get to yeah. the the how you're working with advisors on it. But uh, and then the uni plan to me is like all of the your, your foundation and advice, advice stuff. And then the uni, the master's plan is the specialist advice um, pieces. And, and you're absolutely right. You don't need to be doing doing those within your own practice if as long as you have a pathway to you know you know find a find somebody that can do those things for you um and refer them off and refer them back in i think um, i think that's the, the, the whole yeah. idea of uh for see it right to, if, if you don't know about it refer it to somebody else yeah exactly if it's not your area if it doesn't light you up then yeah. find someone that does exactly right now you mentioned the doing before because it's i think it's a really important we've talked about a lot of concepts and it's and a lot of people are going that's a good idea that's a good idea but the the proofs in the doing which as visionary um uh, as visionaries we're not always the best at um and so we do need uh, somebody to help or an integrator I reckon or a process. You'd be off the charts i would like you to do the test i reckon you'd be off the charts visionary <laughs> i can tell you right now i do i am um and so t- tell us about that then because obviously you're working with people that can then to integrate, to make this actually happen. Yeah, and drag you back a bit. So to make sure you're not going down a path, you know, get so excited and want to do this new technology, whoa, um, to, to actually, and I give them full permission to to do that, to, to challenge me on things. And I think, you know, you have to, in the integrated visionary role, you have to have someone that will do that. Now, as a visionary, sometimes I get the, you know, shits to be quite honest when someone's done that. But then I take myself back and go, why are they doing it? It's because they've got my best interest. They know I'll, I'll have a whole heap of tasks unfinished, um, you know, and rather than mastering something and doing it really well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of making sure you're working with the integrator to, to pull you back and focusing on one thing. Doing one thing, like I'm working with this um, younger advisor at the moment who I'm super enjoying working with. He's got so much, you know, energy, but he's doing 50 things. You know, oh, maybe I'll try this joint venture with his accountant firm. Maybe I'll try Facebook ads. Maybe I've got a Facebook group and or maybe I should do, you know, PR and stuff like that. We just do one thing. We do that really well. We master it. We refine it. We review it. And then we move on to the next thing. I did not have my podcast, my Facebook group, my program, my everything in six weeks. Um, you know, I mastered one thing and then, you know, moved on to the next. So, uh, yeah, I think that's really important uh, and to, ha- to have one thing you're focusing on. Yeah. Now, I, l- I love the fact that you've got a podcast. I'm going to get there in a minute. But um, one of the things you mentioned a few times is that you're working with people. You're working with coaches on this and coaches on that and 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 your accountability buddies and coaching That's that you've invested, like you said in the very uh, early on, you mentioned investing in yourself. Tell us a little bit about yeah. that and your journey and, and, and how many coaches you've had and had or well, have and have had over the over the a past. A lot. Yep. A lot. I um, It makes my university course uh, degree looks very cheap now, the coaching. Uh, but I think it's just that I always want – one of my values is, you know, learning and growing. And if I'm not learning and growing, like I, ha- I have to be doing that. I, I've worked with lots of different coaches on different things. So emotional intelligence um, coaches, uh, coach to scale your business, um, someone to help me with um, doing two different, two or three different courses on uh, online courses. Um, work with people on professional speaking. So people are like, well, how do you get all these speaking things? Well, I've, I did you know several speaking programs and courses and mentors one on one. I'm in that professional speaking space. So uh, that I've done. You know, working with uh, another coach at the moment on, on on scaling and growing. And he's really good because he just focuses on on coaching. So he just focuses on how to um, you know be a better coach um and yeah overseas we've done fincon that's how i first met you at fincon i love love going to fincon um yeah fincon i've been to um xy planning network overseas so xypn is like our version of xy but overseas um so i've been um i've been to their conference um as well so yeah I, you know invested heavily like you know most of the people that i choose uh, coaches that i work with it's somewhere in the order of thirty thousand um, dollars a year to work with them so you know if i've had multiple coaches you can see how much that adds up to um so yeah for me when you put that sort of money behind something you, you do the work 
um, you know, people, you know, when you put that money behind it, are more likely to take action when you put like a, a small house deposit on something. Um, yeah, so I've worked with lots of different coaches at the moment. Also, and this is going to be very weary for a lot of people um, listening, but I'm you know, just tapping into the, I don't care, I'm 40, I deal with it. Um, so I'm working with a, a psychic medium at the moment as well. So um, that's, uh, I've always been really big on my intuition. There's several things that have happened that I know is going to happen that I can't explain how I knew was going to happen. Um, and that, so that's something that I'm tapping more into um, and trying to figure out how do I better develop that skill? How can I randomly know some things but not others? I mean, and be very clear about stuff. So yeah, that's something without getting into it. I've, I've known when people were going to pass away without them knowing. I know when people were going to be pregnant before they knew. Yeah, it, it's very trippy and very out there and very different to, you know, my commerce degree. Um, but I'm tapping more into that um, creative space. So, yeah, I've worked with business coaches, psychic mediums, the whole shebang. Brilliant. Love it. I'm going to, I'm going to follow that journey because I'm interested to see how, how it goes. Um, now, I want to talk about the concept. There's a, there's a bit of a buzzword around at the moment called uh, Finfluencers. Um, yeah. and, uh, and obviously, uh, you know, when you're talking about doing something at scale from one to many and zero to many, you become, uh, an influencer in a way, mm-hmm. uh, under the, under the new term that we've sort of all got to know. And then of course, if you're talking about money, you're a influencer. So, um, uh, found itself in the media recently, but also, uh, you know, I think something that we really need to, um, entrepreneur from an entrepreneurial mindset, we need to understand how influencing works. Mm. So, I mean, I, I guess I really like the influencers, the ones that do it well, because they bring this awareness of money, make it make it something that's not that's cool to talk about, that's okay to talk about, that's okay to have. So, I actually like that they've made money something that's a mainstream topic to talk about. Um, where I've had a problem with it is when they do it like, you know, this is going to sound, again, I don't care. You know, the people were selling oils before and now they're selling crypto or now they're selling, um, you know, Forex trading and telling me how easy Forex trading is. And, and they get, but they're actually not making their money from Forex trading. They're making their money from the $300 training fee, just like with the Terra. They're not making their money from selling the oils. They're making their money from signing people up for the $500 packages. So I had an issue with the multi-level marketing side of it, um, you know, preying on people that were vulnerable, stay-at-home mums, you know, paying them to be this, sign up to this $300 thing, you'll learn all the training stuff. So I had an issue with that. Uh, but I didn't have an issue with them, you know, just there's some amazing influencers that I follow uh, who aren't financial advisors, but they're doing some amazing stuff in the finance space. Um, so, yeah, I guess so one of them is a lady called the, um, Emma from the Broke Generation. Um, she does an amazing job. I love her stuff. Um, of course, there's also people that are licensed that are influencers. So um, Victoria from She's on the Money, um, you know, is one. Um, so yeah, I definitely think you know they've had a role to play. Um, but you know, at, at times it's also unfair because how are they allowed to talk about that? If I did that and said that, um, or partnered with a particular product, you know, we would we weren't we're not allowed to do that. So yeah, there's definitely some ways. Um, you know, I think sometimes I think it's not fair, but I also think it's amazing the job that they've done and highlighting and bringing money to the forefront. Um, so people that want to take it, take that free information and go and do it themselves, they're probably not going to be your ideal client anyway. Like people come to me because they want accountability. They're, they're not someone that's yeah. So yeah, for me, um, most most of those people aren't my ideal clients anyway. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's it's interesting that the new space we're playing in. Yeah, exactly right. It all all depends on you know the history and the background. Like you said, if there's a if it's a multi level marketing, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to recruit one of them at the moment. I I think they would be amazing to partner to ha- have as an employee in my business. I've tried to recruit several of them. I've got one at the moment um, because they understand community, they understand engagement, they understand marketing. Like you know, I, I think you know, and I've got a um, so I really I, I think that you know they would make an amazing employees inside financial planning businesses. That's a really, really good way of looking at it for a lot of people out there that uh, that are running financial planning businesses and trying to work out how to bring, um, you know, I guess new, new mm-hmm. clients into the business or, or or additional clients into the business and try and grow their businesses that way. Uh, Adele, thank you so much um, for coming on. Now, tell tell me about the future. We've mentioned a little bit of the stuff that you're working on now, but let's t- t- tell me about the, your 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 next six to twelve months. What does that look like? Next six to twelve months. Um, so they've already happened in my head, but yeah, the <laughs> next six to twelve months is uh, okay. I'm going to say this publicly because you guys are going to hold me to it, and I want everyone to hold me to it. Um, I'm going to write a book to financial advisors. So um, you know, I've got two decades worth of experience. I've worked with a zillion different coaches. I want to get the IP out of my head. I want to help more of the good guys, the good advisors succeed. Uh, and I see some of them doing it so hard, and it doesn't need to be that way. And so, yes. 
I want to I want to do a book for advisors to help them, you know, um, love advice again, to be able to grow and scale without burnout, um, to help more of the good guys win and stay in the industry. So I'm doing that publicly. You guys hold me accountable. I want to have it done by the end of the year. So yeah, that's and um, yeah, I'm, I'm start. I, I'm now working more with financial advisors. So I'm I'm working with some advisors at the moment, and I'm absolutely loving it. I, I love it because um, you know they're stuck on something. I help them get unstuck. Um, help them charge for their worth, understand the value that they give, help them not do more hours but give more value. Like I, I'm really enjoying coaching and working with advisors at the moment. Um, yeah, I, I wish I did it years ago. I don't know why I didn't start it earlier. But anyway, but yes, working with more advisors now and I've got a book coming. I want everyone to hold me accountable. As you were saying that, um, I was just thinking about the fact that you've spent all this money on coaches over the years and, and now you're just passing that knowledge on. And uh, you, that, yeah. that sounds like a bit of a bargain to me. Um, so if somebody wants to reach <laughs> out to you and, uh, and get hold of you and have a chat to you about what uh, the future might bring or continue this conversation, what's the best way for them to, to yeah, reach out? Yeah, if they're wanting help to grow and scale their businesses, I'm happy to have a chat for them. I've got a lot of free resources as well. Um, I've just did a, a guide to work with millennials and I've got a few other, um, you know, that pathway document. I've got that pathway document about the high school graduate. Um, I've got that as the document I've got heaps of free resources that, um, I can shoot them through as well um, or they want to have a chat and further and they think they will actually want to grow and scale their business I'm happy to look at what coaching looks like as well they can you know, all, all of the Facebook Instagram or um, you know email Adele at AdeleMartin.com um, that will reach me directly Adele at AdeleMartin.com or you know LinkedIn Facebook all the ways Brilliant. Thank you, Adele. Thank you for being part of the series. We were talking about uh, how we can, you know, advice entrepreneurs can deliver cost-effective advice to more Australians. You've certainly pointed out how you're doing it and really appreciate you coming and giving all this information today. Oh, thanks for having me. 